Hi everybody, I am here with a friend, Ellie, who um, is a part of Street Life Ministries that my wife, Sean, has been working with for the last two months? Just about, yeah. About two months? Awesome. And I've heard a lot of awesome things about you and your story, you. and so I can't wait to hear your story, and I'm, and I'm grateful that you're willing to come here and share this for others that will view our podcast and watch this video on YouTube and Facebook and all that, and so I, I just want to ask that we just pray and just ask okay. that God just shares your testimony with people that need to hear a good story. Okay. All right. So Lord, thank you so much, God, for being with us. Bless Ellie and, and her story and her testimony, Lord. I pray that everything that is said here today is just something that you can use for somebody who will listen or see this video and it will speak to them and to their heart, Lord, and maybe uh, even reach out to them to change their life and grab a hold of you and ask for you to be uh, their Savior and their Lord, Father God. So thank you so much for Ellie's heart and willingness to sit down with us and share um, some tough stuff in her life and also some really cool things that have happened in her life as well. So Lord, thank you and bless our time together. So we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for for being here. And like I said, my wife, Sean, has, has been just raving about you and saying that since ever since she met you, that she is just amazed about how smart you are and how, how great personality you have. And so I know um, a little bit okay. of how you came to the ministry. Um, so I guess one night, a, a Redwood City police officer or San Mateo County Sheriff mm -hmm. officer brought you to Redwood City, uh, yes. wasn't there. He... Um, just kind of dropped you off at the ministry and said, here's somebody that you need to take care of. And boom, was gone. And so um, everybody at the ministry kind of knows those who live on the street and you were a new face and we didn't, nobody knew you, right. didn't know what to do. Um, and I'm just so grateful that my wife was able to, to jump into action and be able to help you out. And I know you're currently staying at one of our local uh, shelters that we partner with, which is mm -hmm. which is a great uh, partnership that we have, and so with that, um, love to hear your story. How did you get here? Where okay. are you from? Uh, like, what was your childhood like? Your upbringing and all that stuff. So, um, I had a wonderful childhood, and um, I actually um, started this journey on December fifteenth from the East Coast. Um, I had been. Oh, sorry. It's okay. This is why it's good to hear testimonies because this is going to be powerful for people to hear what you have to share. Um. I was in a very bad relationship, very abusive, emotionally, physically. And um, I just woke up one day with my two dogs and I said, I, I have to be brave and I gotta go. Hmm. So I, um, I was on the East Coast and like I said, it was December 15th and I packed up my car with my two dogs and whatever I could take. And I just drove. I didn't know where I was going. Um, I originally tried to go to Canada, but I couldn't because of COVID. So then I just started going west. Um, and I was very fortunate most of the way. Um, I had a lot of different individuals who were um, very loving and helpful. Um, they helped me, you know, I, originally I had some money and I could stay at um, a hotel now and then so I could shower. I also um, learned the trick of going to hotels that served free breakfast. <laughs> so that was sometimes my one meal of the day. Mm. And um, I learned that if I went to a gym and said I was new to the area, I could shower. <laughs> um, so little things like that, but I mostly slept in my car and, you know, on the, I was by myself, a woman um, with two dogs, two small dogs. So. There were a lot of circumstances that weren't so safe, but I tried to stay in places that were safe. I would spend the night sometimes at um, just hotel parking lots or 24-hour restaurant parking lots 
where I knew that um, I would be safer. Mm -hmm. um, so it took me from December 15th, and I wasn't in a rush. I was more just concerned about being found. Um, so I arrived via, you know, the northern states of the United States um, into Northern California. Um, I had not been able to make payments on my car, but thus far I was okay. Hadn't gotten repossessed. Um, when I got to Northern California, um, somebody did a wellness check on me because I was sleeping in the car and um, two police officers came and they were very kind. Um, I think this was in the Santa Barbara area. They took me to a hotel and they paid for two nights for me to stay at this hotel out of their own pocket. They didn't even have hotel vouchers at this point. Mm. Um, and then they referred me to a church that was nearby and I talked to the pastor there and the pastor paid for an additional two nights for me. Um, during that time that I was at the hotel, my car got repossessed and I had emptied out the two front seats of the car because I'd been living in that car since December 15th and now we're talking about the beginning of June, end of May. Um, so I just wanted to vacuum it out. But I didn't take anything out of the trunk and so all of my um, personal files, my birth certificate, everything was taken when the mm. car was repossessed. And I didn't have the means to get to where they towed it. Um, I also couldn't afford, they wanted $21,000 and they wouldn't let me try to pay it in pieces. So basically the car was gone with all of my things that were in the trunk. Sure. Um, at that point in time, I became homeless and I just started walking south with the two dogs. Um, I have an older dog that's 14 and a half who has arthritis. So when I could, I would get um, a grocery cart to try to push her in. And I ended up um, in a park in Redwood City, which at that point, another police officer found me and dropped me off here at the ministry. And from there, um, Sean, your wife, started helping me and she got me into a shelter. Um, she managed to get one of my dogs to be able to stay with me as an emotional support animal. Um, and the other dog is being fostered. My elderly dog is being fostered by somebody that Sean from the ministry knows. Wonderful man. And so now I'm at a place where um, I'm safe. You know, I have shelter. I have meals every day. And I'm working with the ministry to get back on my feet. I've found a job that I'm going to start on the 1st of September. I feel safe. Um, and I'm just putting one foot in front of the other. Um, so it's getting better. Yeah. So if, if you don't mind, just to kind of go back to um, part of the, I know it's it's hard and the, the and, in the beginning part of your testimony, yeah. um, just so people can understand. Um, um, for myself personally as well, right. I don't I don't understand domestic violence. Yeah. Per se, um, I know what it is. Of course, I've just I'm not that type of a person, and nor is my relationships. Mm -hmm. um, how does how, how, this might sound naive and stupid? So yeah. I, just forgive me for that. But how does um, how does something like that start? Like when you when you met this person, obviously it wasn't that way in no, the beginning. No, they were the most wonderful, kind, romantic person ever. Mm -hmm. Had been in recovery for nine years mm -hmm. from alcohol abuse and methamphetamine. Um, and one day decided to pick up again. And it was not the person that I woke up next to the night before. Sure. And it, it was progressive, um, started with uh, one or two beers and just got worse and worse and worse until it was a bottle of vodka and then the meth started. And as the alcohol and drugs got worse, the abuse got worse. So he relapsed? Yes. Yes. And, okay. Um, and like I said, it wasn't the same person. And because I knew that other person, I tended to be extremely forgiving and hopeful that I would wake up and it wouldn't be like that. Mm -hmm. 
but it was. Yeah. And it didn't get better. It got worse. And I just woke up one day and I said, no more. So how many deserves this? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I really, like I said, I don't understand. And I wasn't going to be able to fix it. Sure. Sure. They had to really want it for themselves, not for me, not for anybody else, but for themselves. But for me, (laughs) I had to step out of the situation. So how long were you in, in that volatile situation? About two years. About two years? Yeah. So what would you say to, to uh, uh, another female that might be watching this in that kind of same situation? I mean, like, what, what was it that finally... Because I, I, I hear these stories, so I hear stories on TV and stuff where women just for years get stuck in this and they just, their self-esteem is destroyed and they just feel like there's just no way of getting out or they're going to fix the person all the all the isms right right? so what would you tell um a female that's watching this that that's in something like this like where do you make that stand and how do you and how do you just say okay enough's enough i'm gone i think you have to find the strength within yourself and you know have faith in god and people that there are good people out there that will help you, mm-hmm. but you have to take the first step. You have to step out of the situation and realize that it will get better and you can get away. You yeah. just have to be strong enough to do it. Right, um, right. And I was. I had lost all of my um, self-worth. I had lost... I don't know. I thought I was worth nothing. Sure, sure. Because that's what it was told to me right. every day. Right. Um, unfortunately, I had the two dogs, and I just knew if I couldn't do it for me, do it for them. Yeah. So. That's an interesting concept because a lot of times what Sean and I will tell folks that we're trying to get into recovery yeah. is even if you even if you can't see yourself doing it for yourself do it for x right and then once you get into it you'll realize that you're actually doing it for yourself but just if you you know you got to muster up something to get your courage you have to up have to the do. will to live you right. have to right. um and you have to know that if it wasn't like this at one point in your life it can be like it used to be, but not with that person. Right. You cannot fix them. You cannot change them. It's n- not possible because it's not your place. Sure. Um, and I think once that really sunk in, I didn't know where I was going. I just knew I wasn't staying. Right. So so then so then you leave. And, um, and then, so, I, I'm, so interestingly enough, you leave, you go, try to go to Canada, mm-hmm. can't because of COVID. Right. So somehow or another, you, you end up north, obviously, yep. from, from north on the East Coast. And then somehow you zigzag back through the country. You end up in I went along South the, I went California. I along the northern states. Right. And every state other than Washington. <laughs> and then I cut through um, Idaho down into Oregon went south in Oregon mm-hmm. and I didn't really know where I was going to land. I tried um, stopping in Idaho at one point and a very um, good organization that helps women that are in you know domestic violence situations. They had purchased an RV for me that needed some work and they paid for a spot for me to park. Mm. Um, they actually, my car had been towed and they paid $600, this woman's group, to get my car out of being sure. towed. And I was planning on staying there, but then I was getting all of these private number phone calls and I realized that I was being tracked. So I just left and I felt terrible about that. I mean, they knew where the RV was and I, I didn't even take the risk of letting them know that I was gone. I just ran. So um, you mean tracked by your ex? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's when I threw 
At some point I realized this, I mean, and I threw my phone in a pond. I lost all my pictures, everything. I'm mm. hoping that maybe I can figure out a way to get those back because there were like 900 photos that meant a lot to me on that phone, but my safety meant more. Sure. Um, wow. So yeah, I threw it in a pond. <laughs> so are, I, let me just, because you know, I'm asking these questions because also people that watch yeah. this, that, that hear this, they might they might be able to email me or, right. or contact my wife with suggestions and help. So are you guys still currently right now legally married? No, divorced. Divorced, okay. The, that's, the that's abuse good. continued after the divorce. Oh, it did, okay. Yeah. Um, so, man, that's just such a powerful testimony, wow. Um, so, okay, so I know you're going to church. I am. Right, so you definitely are connected with the Lord. Yes. Right, you have, you believe in Jesus Christ, obviously. You Absolutely, have a relationship yes. with God. So would you say, through everything that you've gone through, that's been something that's been in your life? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Were, you raised, were you raised Christian? Or? No, 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 that was a choice I made. Um, okay. My parents, my mother was Catholic. She was raised Catholic, mm -hmm. and my father was um, Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. But they did not raise us. They originally started raising us in the um, Catholic religion because my mom's mom insisted and my older sister was baptized, but then after that, there's four girls in my family, none of us were. Um, and they had their reasons. Um, my dad lost his mom when he was 16 and didn't believe there could be a God that would let that happen to him. Mm. His father was an alcoholic, and again, same thing. Um, and then my mom just, um, I think, the end of it for them religion wise was that they had been going to a church and I do remember going to the potlucks at this church but there was a um, minister there that had adopted a little black boy and he was shunned by the community because this little kid was black hmm. and my dad and mom said that was the final straw for them um, but they did um, as we were growing up we always went to private schools so I had you know religious upbringing but I made that choice on my own um, as a young adult. Sure. Um, so you yeah. have sisters? I do. You do? Okay. Are you in touch with any of them at all? Not right now. Not right now. Okay. No. Okay. Well, maybe someday so, some. Yeah, yeah. When when the time is right. Yeah. Okay. Um, which hopefully it will be soon. I mean, I've come a long way since meeting Street Life Ministries. A long way. Yeah. Um, so my wife said, "Yeah, from the first night that she met you till right now, it's, yeah. it's a huge difference." So, you know. absolutely. Um, the one thing I think that um, people need to know, though, that if you go into a shelter situation, the people are extremely kind and loving, and they want to help you. But you have to take the first steps. Mm -hmm. You can't just sit back in a shelter, have the food, sleep in a bed, and do nothing. You have to move forward. You've got to start looking for a job. You've got to stand on your own two feet. And it'll happen. I mean, you've got people backing you up, but you can't just think to yourself, oh, okay, I'm safe now. I'm just going to sleep here and take the meals. It doesn't work that way. You've got to be proactive constantly for yourself. Hmm. I um, love that. You really that's, do. That, that's a great message. I, I'm really glad you just said that. And you got to want it. you got to want to be in a better place. Right. Um. You can't just let somebody else, expect somebody else to pick up the ball and run with it. Hmm. So, um, my, my, my. and I've had that drive. I needed it back. And it took me from leaving December 15th. And, you know, I met a lot of kind people on the way. I, I was a magnet towards churches. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a few bad things happen, but... I was smart enough to get myself out of situations. Sure. Um, one instance was I was staying at a um, rest stop and I had the two dogs in the car, obviously, and I was parked maybe two cars away from this guy who pulled in in like a little red car and he kept backing up and looking in my windows of my car and then mm. pulling back into his spot and backing up and looking at me and I was very aware of it. And so I decided to myself, um, I'm going to pull out of this area and see if he follows me. And sure enough, he did. Hmm. He followed me. 
and all I was trying to do was get to a more populated area. I was in a rest area, and he followed me all the way until I turned into a street that was going to lead into a little town. And then he rolled down his window and started yelling profanities at me and went the other way. And I just thanked God that I had it enough together to realize that this person was dangerous and sure. that something bad could happen and that I left. Yeah. Um, that was probably the worst thing that happened to me. Um, yeah, that's the one sad spot about being yeah. a female on yeah. on the streets is the is the vulnerability that that with predators out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's I, Sean and I we hear those stories all the yeah. time, and it's just it's really sad. It's it, it it it's being a man is the one thing about the male race that just disgusts me that that guys are like yeah. that, and so I'm sorry you had to go through. A situation yeah. like that, it's just sad. It, you know, it just shows you that sin has no bounds, right? So. Yeah, I mean, this person was obviously staking me out. Well, of course. Did yeah. not care that I had the dogs. Right. Did not care at all. Um, and really, the only other terrible things that happened to me is I had parked at one um, a rest area, and there was a trucker parked next to me that didn't have a load on, and it was night, and I had taken the dogs out. And when I came back, I put the dogs in the car through the driver's side. He was parked on my passenger side. I put the dogs in the car. We slept there that night. And I left in the morning. And when I went to go switch lanes to look in my mirror, there was no mirror. Oh. So I pulled over, and the whole right side of my car was gone. Mirror, everything. Just oh. completely destroyed. No note, no nothing. So that was terrible. Um, but... Oh, Nobody sad. was hurt. I didn't have the money to fix it, obviously, so I just kept going. Well, they, it ended up getting repoed anyway. So It did get repoed. <laughs> <laughs> so let them deal with it. Yeah, they right. wanted $21,000. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you're not getting $21,000. So, right, right. Um, yeah, and then the, the only other really bad thing that happened to me is that I had an individual offer to help me. Um he put me up in a hotel for one night. There was no um, indication that he was going to do anything sexually or wrong or anything. He never came on to me, but apparently the next morning we were going to take all of my things that I had left in this world that had been in my car when it got repossessed and put them in a hiding place because I knew at that point I was going to start sleeping outside. So I took everything out of the hotel room, I put it next to his car, and I went to go thank the pastor who had helped me pay for the hotel. And when I came back, he was gone, and so were all of my things. Mm -hmm. So everything that I had left in this world, my passports, all of my clothing, my shoes, the church had just, one of the churches had just given me $400 in Visa gift cards to get clothing and shoes and everything else, <sighs> just gone. All yeah. my toiletries, my makeup everything that I had left. Thankfully, I had my backpack on me and my two dogs when I went over to the church. So I still had my wallet with my driver's license and my social security card. And I had my dogs. Sure. Um, but I did go to the place where he said he was going to store my things, trying to maintain some hope that he had put them in his car and taken them there. He showed up, but my things weren't there, and he claimed that I had been rude to him. I don't know how. Mm. Um, obviously, he was a thief. Not well. He was not only a thief, but I think he was high. Wow. Um, he claimed that he had left my stuff on the street. Well, my stuff wouldn't have disappeared within a ten-minute span of time. Right. If somebody had taken it, they would have had to take it piecemeal. First of all, notice that it was all there, and then just gone. It yeah. wouldn't have happened in sure. that time frame. So I know he took it. Right. Um, well, the good thing is is that God will bring back all the things that were taken from right. you. And all the stuff that's materialistic, will, yeah. will, and that's it'll come back in your life little Those by little. Those are just things. They, sure. They're replaceable. My animals, not replaceable. My and, life, not replaceable. And physically, you're out of harm now. So Correct. And yes. you're, you're in a good place today. So that's... that's mm -hmm. the. Part of the blessings that God is going to put in your life, He's going to keep building yeah. that. And now you got a job, right? So you're going to start working, and I so that's really job. cool. So um, just to kind of finish up, is um, any because I have a lot of people that watch this yeah. and uh, they listen and they they pray for the people that that uh, they hear and see. 
Um, what would be some things that you could think of off the top of your head that you'd want people to be praying for you? If there's um, mm. things that maybe that you are in immediate need of uh, currently right now that if somebody has something to provide for you, um, they could donate it to the ministry and then we can uh, give it to you. Um, so if um, right now would be a good time to share that. And okay. Well, my goal has always been to have an RV to live in because then I don't have to worry about furniture. There's actually an RV place that's next to the shelter that I'm staying in where I wouldn't have to pay anything for utilities or to park it or anything like that. Um, that would provide me an opportunity to get my elderly dog back and have them be able to stay there when I'm working. So that would be a start. Um, I do need transportation so that I can work. Um, the job that I have taken is a sales position selling to corporations. So I would be um, going from corporation to corporation, you know, for sales purposes. And then, um, you know, just really those are my two greatest needs. Um, I also, at one point when I was sleeping in the park, I lost my prescription glasses and I haven't been able to get an appointment until mid-September through um, the services that I have through the state. And I start work on the first, so if I could see somebody to get glasses and have an exam, that would be helpful because right now I just have sunglasses and I don't really want to show up in an office wearing sunglasses and appear to be like not in my right mind. But that's the only prescription I have right now, so I do wear them. Um, I was fortunate enough to get what they call an Obama phone. So mm -hmm. I have a phone. Um, my service is entirely free. So if there's anybody out there that is looking for something like that, there are people at the library, there are people at the shelters that show up that as long as you have um, either an EBT card where you're getting food stamps or you have um, you know, your insurance card through the state and an ID, you can get a phone. Mm -hmm. which unlimited use um, and that was a lifesaver for me as well because it enabled me to have phone calls so that I could get a job um, yeah so that's pretty much my my greatest needs um, okay. right now sounds good so RV mm -hmm. car for transportation correct and we need to get you some glasses some glasses we need to get you a, an appointment to get you some to get Correct. your prescription checked and then get you some glasses. Yeah. That okay. A, that would be a blessing. All right. Well, I think the last need I think we could probably take care of, right? Costco. So anyway, sorry. Okay. I'm just thinking out of my head. Yeah. So um, anyway, so thank you so much you're welcome. for sharing your testimony and God bless you. And I'm so Thanks. glad that you're on the right track. I'm so glad that you're safe. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, that you ever had to go through the experience that you went through. Um, but I do hope and I do pray that what you shared, somebody will hear it and they will be feel they will feel compelled to one go, go, come to Jesus and pray mm -hmm. for, for their strength and courage to get out of the situation they're in yeah. and just be bold enough to leave um, a situation like that and just be encouraged to know that they they can leave. Yes. So you just got to just do it. You just make up your mind and go. There you go. You know, and that um, God will be with you all the way, right? Absolutely. So thank you You're for welcome. sharing it and I appreciate it. And my wife is right. Your, your, your story is amazing. So thank you. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Bye. You have a gorgeous smile. <laughs>